What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, consider hitting subscribe. The video you're about to watch is about an hour and 20 minute conversation with a local videographer here looking to start their company. We go over pricing for clients, a little bit of SEO, pretty much everything you might wanna know about starting your business as a video production company will be covered in this video. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll see you guys next time. So oh, man, so uh, tell me a little bit about you and what you got going on and what I could possibly help you with today. What are you looking to learn? Uh, cool, man. So uh, yeah, I've been running my own uh, operation with uh, photo video for the past few years and, um, you know, getting situated with the future, just, you know, trying to develop certain skill sets, you know, just grow the business. Um, I've been fortunate enough that I have a pretty solid recurring client in a university down here. Okay. Uh, but I don't want to put all my eggs in, in that basket. And I just, I've been thinking for the past couple of months, if I could find another, you know, solid client or two, something similar to this, like, you know, I'm straight, but it's just a lot of my work has come from like word of mouth. And, um, I guess I want to try to properly market myself in the business to grow it in that sense. Got it. How did you get this big client that you currently have right now? Um, the thing is that, uh, like I said, I, I was fortunate enough that basically the office that I started to internship with, with this, uh, their marketing department at the university. So I interned there for about a year and then, um, you know, I left on good terms and then they were starting to get backed up and they were talking about that they've been wanting to bring in a contract a freelancer for a while now and because i know their workflow you know i know everyone there i know how they operate they thought it would be a good fit for uh them to start you know feeding me some of the work that they're too busy that they could handle themselves and uh yeah so since that i've been working with them for about two three years now on oh, a solid account yeah it's pretty solid and then uh I've been able to really network throughout the university from the, the university's actual marketing department uh, to like different colleges within the university. So it'll go from, you know, something general for the university itself to the College of Business, College of Hospitality, you know, a startup department. So I've been able to work around some of the different departments on campus. Got it. So are you looking for more of the same clients or are you just looking to really, are you looking to just kind of lend two other clients that are kind of retainer like what what is what is the ideal situation for you yeah the, the ideal situation is to just try to pick up about another really good um monthly retainer or two uh because uh the thing is with the university that it's been good but uh, with them we kind of work on a per project basis so whatever you know pops up you know they give me a call it's not exactly like they have me on a three thousand dollar monthly retainer it's just hey if it comes in um you know we'll call you if you're available you know type deal so it's been good but i just again i want to be able to grow so that you know i don't always need to rely on just this one client to get through got and it probably that because it's a university uh summers are slow um so it has its months throughout the year where things are really busy or things are really slow gotcha um, so what kind of videos are you shooting for the university? Is like talking head stuff, like event yeah. stuff, just have an idea of what? Yeah, it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty widespread. So I'm doing both, uh, like interviews, uh, testimonial type docs, like little short docs, whether it's like about a program or a student or a professor. Um, and then also again with some like video uh, event recaps with some of the programs or conferences that they have going on. Um, so it's basically a little bit of both. So it fluctuates between that. Um, I do do some photo stuff for them, but this year I just, I want to be able to focus more on video just because uh, uh, video pays significantly more than a uh, photo does. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, all right, I guess I'll start off with some basic stuff. I'm guessing you have a website. Yeah. Cool. Have you set up a Google My Business being in a Yelp page? Yeah, so that was actually one thing I picked up from the future was that whole Yelp account because uh, I'm pretty sure um, most people think of Yelp as like, hey, what good restaurant do I have around here? But I never thought about it for like business stuff. Yeah. So I set that up. Um, and had a couple friends, you know, just leave, you know, review so that it looks, you know, 
uh, more legitimate in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I ended up getting like this nasty email from Yelp saying, hey, we're aware that these reviews aren't real, da 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 da, -da uh, or whatever. So, but point of the matter is I did the Yelp thing. I did the Google My Business um, a couple of days ago, just from, uh, you know, going through like past calls yeah. and trying to figure out SEO because that's a monster in itself that I don't really know. Mm -hmm. uh, my site is built on Squarespace, but- Perfect. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, and then with my site being on Squarespace, I've seen some of the SEO links that they have there. Uh, but I've been talking with some uh, designers to see uh, who I could have kind of like build out my website to, I guess, a better uh, aesthetic of it. And I've been talking with people and I've been wanting to, you know, change it from Squarespace to WordPress. If I can get someone that could really design it appropriately, just because I don't know why, but finding a web designer has always been such a hassle and such a mission that I get frustrated and end up doing it myself on Squarespace. I use Squarespace and I mean, I don't, I personally, so here's the way, so like the way I really built my business the past couple of years is by offering video to clients, but then be, being also being able to offer them websites. So learning Squarespace and taking the time to learn a little bit about SEO is one of those things that it's going to help you eat through those slower months because now you're like, Hey, we did this awesome video. But I checked out your website and your SEO could be optimized a little bit. And then also sorry, your website's out of date. How would you feel if you spend the next two months updating your website and optimizing your SEO? And like that, when you have your video online, people could actually find it. You got a good looking website. I'm always about like, those are the add-ons that I offer my clients. But that's all stuff that I learned from like, growing my own business. Cause like you as a business owner, anything that you learn that you can implement into your own business, you're able to offer that as a service to any people, any person, any business that you work with. So for you, it comes down, okay, do I want to do website stuff or not? But you can always hire somebody to help you do those things and just offer that as an add on service for your business. Got so uh, what's your website? Uh, RevisCreative.com. Uh, creative.com. So I just played around with it. So you see, like, as you type it in, like in like the tag, it'll say Miami design, photo, video, events. Uh, I was just playing around with it yesterday. Uh, thinking about, again, like, you know, what is someone who is looking for the services? What are they Googling and what are they searching? You know, so because I highly doubt anyone's searching up like, uh, Miami video agency, Miami video, they're more in line to look up, you know, Miami videographer, Miami video production or something. Yeah. So, so that's, so part of the tools. So I highly recommend you use a plugin called keywords everywhere. That's going to allow you to pretty much see what keywords people are using for search. Like if you go to my website, the top part up here, it's one. so with SEO, it works in a lot of different ways, but for your site title up there, if you go to my website, it says video production agency, Pompano, Pompano and West Palm beach. With the title really helps Google understand what your business is about. And then through that ranking, because I have a keyword inside of my site title, that helps me get a higher boost on Google. The other thing here I see is that it's in your sites, not secure. There's a really, this is a really quick fix for um, your website on Squarespace. And we get off the call, just look up like uh, Squarespace SSL activation. Um, you need to, you need, you, you want to have this secure because this is one of the ranking factors for Google. Okay, um, yeah, I, I just, I haven't known how to do that, but I've seen that every time I check it out with on my phone or uh, desktop, it says not secure. And I had no idea what that is. Correct. Google. Yeah. yeah, it's it's super simple, and that happened when they did like an update to their uh, to their whatever backend stuff, and um, so it's it's literally you just have to go on there and click yes that you want you want to secure. I, I don't know why they don't do that. Um, so I mean, so the one thing I would see is just looking on here your website. I think um, you need a clear call to action when people land on here, and uh, Donald Miller. Um, if you go to it's called building a story brand.com. He has a free 
mini series. It's like five, th it's three five minute videos and he kind of goes over like five things you need to have in your website. And one of them is having like a clear call to action of like, so somebody should land on here on your website, the first thing they should know is exactly what you do. So if you go to my website, I think it says like, actually, I don't remember what website it says. <laughs> so yeah, Tasca Studios, full service video production agency for local businesses. Correct, and then it gives you watch our videos or like start a project or some shit like that, right? Yeah. So I'm having, I'm creating that call. To, I'm, t I'm telling them, here are the two things that I want you to do. Here's a call to action. Because what happens a lot is by not having a call to action on your actual website, you allow the customer or the browser to explore by themselves. And you don't want them to explore by themselves. You want to send them to a path of them calling you. Is that just something that like, you know, I'll add some like get started now, book your appointment, some sort of call to actions on here. Um, brand social videos. Let's take a look. Um, your videos are on Vimeo? Uh, I have them both on Vimeo and YouTube. Perfect. Um, are these on playlists? Okay. Um, are you... Video tab? Yeah. Okay. Are your videos on playlists when you upload them to YouTube? Like when you upload them to your website? Uh, what do you mean by playlist? So you know how on YouTube you can create a playlist for your videos? Oh, like, you create like a playlist where it's like, you know, 2019 projects or something like that? Yeah, so the way that I do it is I always put every, all my videos from YouTube are all inside of a playlist and they're only my, they're like business video playlists. So like that, when somebody clicks on this video, you don't want the next video to play some sort of random video. So by putting them in a playlist, you're able to like, hey, the next video is gonna show up, it's gonna be my video again, and the video after that is gonna be my video again, because you don't want you know somebody else's video to pop up out after yours. Um, okay. I've never thought of that, that's a good point. Uh, for SEO purposes and stuff, I would get specific about like, so like I'd have videos, then I'd create sub pages for like event videos, business videos, because right now from a business perspective, you're they have to guess what these videos are about and for a lot of business owners not having a time to figure out it's the same thing like you want to create the easiest path possible for your potential client on like you know where do you want to guide them to so if i got to your website i'm looking for business videos i want to make it super easy for me to find like hey here are all the business videos for you to check out here are all the sports videos for you to check out but then also for google it helps google understand and when people are you know doing uh intent search or intent based search google can be like well these are for they're looking for an event videographer here's a page with event videos to it so like you want to make it super easy for your customer you want to make it super easy for google to understand what your business is about okay um I I mean, you're just looking at stuff here, dude, like you got great stuff. Um, so I think at this point, not knowing where you rank with, uh, let's check out. So I guess yeah, a little, I, man. On the chat, I saw something, uh, some guys have posted a couple of links. That's where I got uh, the whole Google My Business because you put in like keywords and it tells you some things to check out. And then there's this other site from uh, someone recommended from Neil Patel. Uber suggests. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Uber suggests, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this Neil Patel, I checked that out the other day, but uh, I just saw that when I put in my information for that and the Google my business, it was like, oh, check back in like 72 hours. Okay. Uh, Miami, Chroma, Barcelona, Prime, into Empire, American, Think Global Media. Oh, they've got a Miami location. Oh, man. Let me ask because I'm on your site um, and I've always kind of thought of like, you know, putting price or quotes on, on websites like can go either way because you might have like a bigger client, you know, like try to lowball you as opposed to like, you know, a smaller client might get intimidated by a, a bigger price. How's that video price and calculate for little quiz been working for you? Honestly, I don't know because I didn't I didn't sign up for the paid version of it. Um, so at that point, it doesn't allow me to collect the leads for them. But pretty much using a calculator on there, I think all my projects 
come i think the lowest project would probably come out to like 2500 bucks if i'm not mistaken and i'm okay with that uh because most people me at this point right now taking on so it's like the people that usually want to pay me less demand more out of me the clients that pay me five thousand dollars for the 30 second or one minute video they're like hey this is great thank you so much but the, the ones that are like hey i have 1200 bucks and they're also going to need seven revisions because their grandma had something to say about the video their girlfriend had something to say about the video so for me i'm okay with weeding those out and then sometimes you know they still call me and they're like hey so you're probably seeing like is this the best that you could do or like your work and then you do the whole like you know chris doe thing like okay well do you want to work with me do you want to call around like you know what is it why did you call me and that you know i'll, I'll have that conversation with them but for the most part you know we're still getting a good amount of phone calls I me mean, actually i'm not gonna lie we'll probably get three to five new phone calls a month and we probably close about one to two of those deals a lot of our stuff at this point being our third year in business is from you know the relationships we built and then from networking with people that like hey i saw the video you did for this person um we were looking for something similar like that or another you know in your situation bro showing the quality of work that you have i'll start hitting up marketing agencies um like the way that i found that worked best for me i found two marketing agencies down here that they only worked with uh, like one of them works with lawyers that's all they do like they're they're called marketing lawyer pros or something like that but all they do is work with lawyers but they're older they're probably like in their 50s or 60s they don't do video at all yeah. so i'll be like hey I'll, I'll do video for you guys you get a 10 percent cut of anything that you send me because they're already work lawyers got money to spend you know what i mean so like somebody's sending me a hot lead that i don't have to fish down they're like hey they got six g's they want to do a profile business video in a short 30 second can you can you do that for six grand yeah i could do that for six grand you know what i mean like here's your 10 percent. You, you know what i mean like i don't have to search for the lead you're literally bringing somebody to me so we had one agency like that and then we had another agency that works with like uh local brands and things like that but the same thing you know depending on the level they probably bring us like two to three thousand dollar projects so i'm giving them anywhere between three to five percent of what they send me so as long as like because uh, they're making because they also tax i usually go and i work through their agency like we're like a subcontractor working through them so they're already taxing on top of me and they're making you know a kickback so you know, I like to work those strategies of people bringing me hot leads versus me having to chase them down. So now the leads that I do chase down are the ones that I really want to work with. And I'm building my portfolio towards working with them while somebody else is bringing me all the leads that I want to work for. But, you know, for that to work for you, you also need to have, you know, you have enough work that you can make some sort of playlist that you could pitch to certain marketing agencies like hey if you guys are ever looking for a video production partner here are the videos i've done check out this page here are my rates are you know and then the way that i got in with them i was like hey you know just to show you how eager i am i would love to work on a project with you for free so we can both get the experience of working together and you can be able to show your client what we can do and i want to show you what i'm able to do and you also get to make the video that you want and you're adding a new video to your portfolio but then also building a relationship with somebody else i'm all about that i know chris hates us doing free work but like doing free work got me on the gary v book doing free work got me to where i'm at today but it's choosing when to do the free work when it's going to benefit you yeah, so it's basically it's not really free because what you're doing is that you're absorbing that network or whatever. So that way, you know, it's not just free. You do it. You never hear back from them. It's free, but you're also opening that door for that. Exactly. Um, one thing that so it's funny that you say the whole niche thing, because um, one thing that that I've worked a lot with uh, this university and I guess just with my experience down here is just events. So I was even thinking about um you know transitioning my company and making it one of the seo uh, keywords of like event marketing and then reaching out to either event planners or these pr companies that put together these large-scale events and one thing that uh i've been so right now my business i'm working with my fiance and she handles like social media and design mm -hmm. uh, 
And we've done this thing where we'll go out to events and kind of create like a live story on the spot where it's like, because most people think of social media and it's like, you know, some young person, like some, you know, student on their phone doing a boomerang, whatever. But what we're doing is that, so my fiance will create like some sort of uh, design template to put as like a background. And then we're uploading photos and videos from the camera at the event so that it's like this more high end quality type, uh, you know, story type deal. So right now we've seen that we haven't seen a lot of people do that so far. It's mm -hmm. really just been like larger scale companies as opposed to like kind of like, you know, boutique or independent uh, companies like ours. So we've been trying to figure out how we could try to push that on people. We have already like three to five examples of that at these bigger events. And, um, and yeah, so we're trying to figure out how we can get in the door with, uh, you know, these PR companies or whatever. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned that, that marketing uh, agency type deal because uh, I, I just heard that the other day too. It's just, I guess, trying to figure out what's a quality marketing agency mm -hmm. uh, around so that, you know, I'm just not working with like any, you know, raggedy company, that, but it's like actually like, you know, someone that takes their stuff as, you know, Serious. legitimate as I do. Yeah, I mean, that, that comes down to you putting in the work and doing a little bit of search on Google. But it's one of those things, for, when you reach out to those companies, you need to have those case studies ready. You need to be like, hey, you did, you've done three or five events, create, like, I would create a short video talking about, like, I would literally make an intro video for them and be like, you could sit there and like what Gary talks about, like contextualizing your content, put together a small promo video of what you guys do and then make a short intro video for every single one. But yo, what up Vayner Media? This is uh, uh, Rives, Reeves, Rives, Rives Creative, Reeves. This is Reeves Creatives. I want to show you what we're, what we're looking to do in promoting your next event. This is a little bit of glimpse of what we can do for you. And then bam, then you do the next one. Hey, what's up? You know, Blue Water Creatives, this is us. This is what we want to do. Love to connect with you guys and the type of events that we do. And make different types of video and send them out because no one else is doing that shit. Like when I started getting a lot of my clients was I was doing my, my strategy to get my business off the ground. I, I was going to Google. I was Googling the best dentists in West Palm Beach. I found like, I made a list of 20 of them. I did research to find out, okay, who's spending money on advertisement? Who's keeping their social media updated? You know, who's active on the internet? And then I went on Google. I got a bunch of their good reviews, made a small review video. Like I pretty much just like, you know, screen grabbed their reviews, made a short video, put a little intro on it. And I was like, hey, dentist, so-and-so, I'm a new agency here. Uh, so you guys had a bunch of great reviews online. I made you a video. Uh, it's ranked on the first page of uh, YouTube. Go check it out. Let me know what you think. They're like, yo, you made us a, a, re a free review video? I'd be like, yeah, man. Like, we really want to work with you. And no, we're trying to build relationships. We're new in town. And this is us just showing a little gesture, uh, you know. And they're like, hey, well, we don't want to do video right now. But, like, in two months, there's something we talked about. We'll definitely keep you guys in mind. And, you know... Two of them didn't work, but one did. And, you know, that guy sent us to three other dentists, but it was doing those things that no one else is doing. But it's so like you making that short video, finding out, like, you know, who you, who you need to be talking to and, like, do a fucking green screen behind you that you can literally just sit there and knock out four different intros to send to four different people. It, it really works. Another great tool that I don't know why more video creators are not using. It's um, if you go to Vidyard, is it Vidyard? Let me see. If we pull this up on here, Vidyard, Vidyard, Vidyard has this plugin called. Uh, let me go to my Gmail. Oh, it's Go Video. Yeah, so Vidyard. So Vidyard is awesome tool. Super expensive though for most small businesses, but they have a free plugin that allows you to upload embedded video into your email. And then it lets you know when the person opened that video and watched it and how much of your video they actually watched. Okay. Kind of like when that YouTube like analytics where it says like, you know, this is where, where they, they, people that clicked and then this is where they stopped watching. Or Correct. Thing, right? So in that sense, you can actually hit up somebody and like send them this video and then embed that video into your email. 
So that way, when they actually, you know, watch it first, you're gonna get a notification saying like, hey, this person watched your video, but then you also know how much of that video they actually watched. Got it. So like, that's something that I use all the time, um, you know, when we're actually like reaching out to the client. So something I do, I'll do a quick recording and I'll, I'll do something like this. I'll write their name, like, I'll be like, yo, Dr. Kyle, I'll like write it on here, his name on here. And I'll choose that as the intro for the video to be like, I have his name written on here. And then I'll start the video, hey, Dr. Kyle, hope everything's well. He's going to know that, you know, we did this video for you, so and so and so. And it could work whatever way you want. But then when he opens it, I know that he opened it and I know where he stopped. So if there's anything that I didn't say or I didn't cover, I'm able to pick up the conversation from there. And it just allows you to have a way smarter and better conversation with potential clients. Okay. Yeah. And I see what you're saying about this uh, being a uh, price because I've seen something get a post starting at five grand. Yeah. But like it's now they're starting to like, there's a, a cheaper version that they're working on coming out with. Cause like the stuff that they, they'll do, it'll be like, like one of the videos that you could do with them. It's like a, a cake box that like the cake box opens. And then the person's name is like written inside of the cake. And like somebody gets that shit, dude, they're like, oh my God, like how the hell did it get my name on that cake as the intro for like, um, you know, and that. That would, that would be under the whole uh, like personalizing videos that I was just looking at something like that. Under yeah, that's the whole personalized. The thing you're looking for, I think it's called like Vidyard Go. And it's just it's just a plugin that you're able to add to your uh, Chrome extension. Got it. So like that helped a lot. It's like, you know, all those little things. And then also like when somebody emails me about stuff, I'll use that video to be like, hey, thank you so much. I got your inquiry. This is, you know, what we had discussed. Let me know if there's anything that, you know, I missed. And then I'll like, I'll do a quick, like short brief summary in the bottom of the email. But then like, like I love knowing the fact of like how many times they clicked on that. But then you being a video production company that offers, you know, you're doing a video chat with somebody, it really shows them like, wow, these guys are doing stuff with video that they're probably not seeing a lot of. And you're like, hey, we can help you and teach you how to use video like we're using for a business like nobody else is doing. And that's what makes you stand out. Okay. Okay. And let me ask you, when it comes to like this whole like finding clients, are you just doing the whole kind of uh, inbound type deal where you're or I guess it's more outbound where you're just doing the Google search, you're trying to figure out, you know, who's who in your area. Um, and kind of like in a way, either cold calling or doing these, you know, this content specific to this person as opposed to like a networking group or some sort of like business networking, not mainly just like video or creative type stuff. Um, Cause I've thought about trying to get into something called BNI. It's a business networking and they have it like chapters in different neighborhoods in Miami. Yeah. Like a, a Coral Gables one and this and that. And I'm already thinking like, all right, well, if I get in some group like that, whether it's Coral Gables, South Miami, Coconut Grove, trying to do a more affluent neighborhood because I know, you know, businesses here should be making more money than, you know, uh, sub another suburban type area. Yeah. Um, at this point in my business, uh, I do very little reaching out to clients just because like it's our third year i would say we're definitely more established we're all i'm ranked so i'm right now i'm ranking in pompano beach for video production company and i'm ranking in west palm beach for video production company so through google i'm already covering two markets down here in south florida so that's probably the most of like the outreach that I do. The only other time I do outreach is with the um, this other marketing agency that we work with. They're like, hey, this guy just signed to do a distribution deal. He has five thousand dollars to do a video. Can you guys make that happen? And be like, yes. I mean, his contact. Like, okay, I also need to present him two other options. We're telling him that you're the one that we recommend. It now it's up to you to close that. So that's been like most of the outreach stuff. And then like a lot of the new stuff, a lot of our new clients are coming from people that we have done business with. And then our clients be like, Hey, I'm going out to lunch with so-and-so. I think it's great. If you guys met, do you want to join in this lunch? And I'll go to lunch with them and stuff like that. But for like networking events worked 
for me for like a networking event worked for me in the beginning because I ended up going to a networking event that a marketing agency was hosting. So in that sense, I know that marketing agency, what they were trying to do, they're trying to get new clients. So I, I'm like, hey, and I saw that they didn't do video. So I'm like, hey, I saw you guys doing video. I just moved down here. And I'm pretty much the same thing I told you before. Like, I'll love to work with you guys. Do you have any upcoming projects that you think that would benefit from video that we could work on something together? And like, I, for me to spend that time, I don't want to spend the time naturing one client that's going to lead me to one deal. I want to nature a client that's going to lead me to multiple ones. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you still have to do the whole dating thing one way or the other. Might as well date someone that's going to bring you more clients and versus one. So like, if I was going to do it over again, like if I was going to find dentists, I'll find out like who's on the board of some dentist committee that's down here in South Florida. And I'll reach out to that dentist that's on top of that board because that dude is going to be the top person on that board. And when he does a video, he's going to be talking to all the other dentists about how he got this video done. And that trickles down. So the same thing, like when I do work with realtors, I don't work with realtors anymore. I work with brokers because the brokers have realtors that are going to send me to more people. It's like, you know, it's the, the same thing. Like you selling a $500 video or selling a $5,000 video, it's still the same sales process. You're just doing less money. So why not go yeah. after the bigger one? Okay. You get to know. You get to know. But the fact yeah. that you and your wife, you said, you guys work together, like, I mean, that has so many opportunities. And we stopped doing a lot of that this past year because I did a lot of SEO and I did a lot of different website stuff. But this year, I really wanted to focus on just doing video production and then working on my YouTube. So, like, the reason I'm creating this content, because, like, I decided that, like, within the next two years, I would love to become a full-time YouTuber. Like, I want to help. I want to teach people. So, like, if it's not related to video production in that sense, I don't want to work on those projects anymore. But the fact that you and your wife can work together, like you, you're so much more powerful and stronger than a lot of other agencies out there. Cause you're one creative like entitlement that does a little of everything. And most people don't yeah, do that. That's the way that we're, uh, we're trying to think of it. Um, I've been trying to keep, get rid of that whole freelance or even calling myself anything like a freelancer and think of it more like, yeah, I'm self-employed. Yeah, I'm running my own shop, and um, I've been. I saw this one movie on Amazon Prime, and I forgot what it was called. It was basically about like you know, the history of advertising, the power of it, and I'm, you know, watching these great ad guys like George Lewis and just crazy shit. People that that put together like the Got Milk campaign, people that put together the Apple campaign, and I've been thinking that of my business uh, less as a oh I'm freelancing, you know, and I have this one great client, and more of like all right, I'm a kind of current ad company where we're trying to do full service creative whether it's photo whether it's video whether it's you know graphics and designs branding like you know reach out to us and we can take care of that so that's the, the route that i'm trying to go towards but i do understand that like at the end of the day video you know makes so much more money than everything else that i've done you know, um, so that's why I'm thinking of, as a way of like, I want to be known for this, but if I have to, I guess, you know, maybe make video first priority. And then once they, they, they get to know us, they see this and that, and they're like, okay, you guys, oh, you guys do video. Oh, you guys create content for social. Oh, you guys uh, do design too. And that way we can try to like, really like, you know, you know, kind of absorb these clients so that like any creative needs that they have or whatever, like we can fulfill that. Yeah, so uh, me and Mo had a talk similar to that uh, last week because he's going through a whole rebranding thing as well. And that's something that I told him is that like, if you go to my website, there's very little to no content about like the SEO stuff. And I think we have a page like all the way in the bottom that talks about web design. But for the most part, if you came to our website, you don't know that we offer local SEO. You don't know that we do different website things. Like video is the gateway into the different ways uh, to the different services that we offer clients. We just want to be like, hey, because like when we do a consultation with the client, that's when I, I let them know, like it's uh, was it show don't tell. Yeah, show don't tell. So when we have a conversation with them, like, hey, what are you guys trying to do with this video? Well, we want to get people to like, you know, 
come come to our practice and when they see the video i want them to like you know give us a call okay are you appearing in google oh we don't know how we're doing google search okay well like you know for me to put a video on your website and no one can find your website the video is not going to work and then if the video doesn't work you're going to get mad at us and say like, hey you made us a video and it didn't get us the clients so the video is not going to solve your problem it will help you solve the problem when you fix this leak first so that's what I told them like, hey, we can do an audit for you on your website and your local SEO stuff. And then from there, I can give you a direction if you I think video would be a great idea for you or not. I just seen clients in this situation in the past that we've done videos for them, but then people couldn't find them on the website and the video doesn't work. And then you have to, you know, do things all over again. And I don't want that to happen to you. So we do up to do an audit, it's five hundred dollars, and I'll tell you, you know, what keyword you're ranking for and so and so and so. And then it'd be like, all right, let's do that. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's the way that I do it. But I found that it's easier for me to come in as a video production agency that does these different things versus me trying to compete versus everyone else that does marketing and does SEO and do all these different things because that market's way more saturated. I mean, video production in Miami, when I looked on there, there was like 19 pages. So it's like, it's definitely, you know, heavier, but you don't, it's like, as soon as you get into a pocket of these businesses, you don't need to be all over the place. All you really need is, you know, a solid little portfolio, reach out a couple of people. If your work is good enough, those people will speak for you. And it's just like, hey, the way that we do it now, when, once we close a deal, we send them a gift basket. So like, I'll take, like when I get the final payment, I'll buy a gift, like I'll buy them like a hundred to fifty dollar gift basket, send it to them. Like, hey, thanks so much. It's great working with you guys. If you know any other businesses that might benefit from working with us, we'll love a referral from you. And then, like, by the way, would you mind leaving us a Google review? And then they'd be like, yeah, sure. And then I, I use a software that helps me get Google reviews and Facebook reviews. And I'm like, hey, by the way, they're like, oh, the software is super easy to use. Or we could license that to you for 25 bucks a month if you want. And they'll be like, oh my God, that's great. Then we got another retainer client. So then we have a bunch of little $25 to $50 clients a month are paying as retainer for software that we license from somebody else. But everything comes, my point of entry is through video because I don't want to compete with all the other agencies. I want them to know that we are a video first agency, but we'll also help you solve all of your other business problems. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it does make a lot of sense like that. And when it comes to try to rank on the Google page, because it's true, if you're on the second page, no one's even, you know, paying attention to that. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of what, just kind of repeating certain phrases like what well, people are going to search and just kind of kind of write that on the front end or back end on the website, like on the pages and stuff like that. Yeah. So the best way to rank on Google. So the way that I would do it, if I was you, I would go type in. So I'll use that, the plugin keywords everywhere and find out what's going to be the best ranking keywords in your area. And then they'll tell you like competition is high. Comp like there's certain keywords that are like highly searched, but very low competition. So try to focus on those. It's always nice to have one or two that are like, you know, there's a high demand and there's a little bit of competition because you want to show Google that your site's relevant, but I'll do my keyword research, find out what are medium, competition keywords that have high amount of traffic. And then I'll go to Google, type in those keywords, see who are the top five results. And then I'll go to their website and look at their website. Okay, what's their site title? What keywords are they using? What content have they built out? Because all you need to, like you don't need to do everything that Google requires for you to like rank on the first page. You just have to beat the person that's on the first page. So if you have, a website that has more content and more talking points and explaining more stuff, Google's going to rank you because all Google cares about is user experience. So if you can provide a better experience than a person that's on the first page, Google will rank your website. And it's not going to happen in a month. It's not going to happen in two. Like it took me six months to rank my in Pompano. But then for me being in Pompano, it was a, it was a like, no one really lived at Pompano at that time. It was way more residential, but it was just north of Fort Lauderdale that if anyone in that area, you know, 
my listing would still pop up and not far enough from Boca. So like it worked out for me very well. You know, being in a competitive market, it might take a little bit longer, but it's also one of those things like, you know, building out a content to build somebody, to beat somebody else that's on the first page of Google is gonna take a little bit longer. But it's, if you're here for the long run, then like, you know, it doesn't matter because that's what you're trying to do. And that's like you, you know, um, the other thing that I'll, if I was you, I'll learn to do is learn how to rank videos on YouTube and then rank those videos. So like right now, I think we're ranking for on YouTube, you put in video production, Pompano Beach. I think we have a couple of videos that pop up on there. And then those videos are linked to my website because, um, because that's gonna help my Google ranking now because I have videos on YouTube that are ranking for video production in Pompano Beach and then those videos are on my website while I'm trying to rank for the same word. It all just shows to Google how relevant you are. And that's just something else that you could do for your client, like our dentist clients, we rank their dentist videos for Lake Worth Dentist, you no know, uh, Jupiter Farms Dentist, because I'm all about like, what's a value proposition that we can bring to our clients that separates us from the other video production companies here? Because most people are gonna shoot a video for a client and be like, here's your video, what are you gonna like, good luck with it, and they don't care about the end result. I wanna make sure that the video is gonna work for you because I want you to do more video. Okay, well, I'll definitely start playing around with this and getting that up. Yeah, but I think, like, the biggest thing, man, is, uh, you know, if I was you, my point of actions after this would be to, you know, create, I would have call to actions on my website to where I want people to get started or watch my video. And then from there, I would have segmented pages on my website for, I would, like, I would have one page that you like watch our video and it has like your best ones, but then I'll have like, you know, a different category. I'll create different categories on my website for the different types of videos. So like that when you start reaching out to different people, be like, hey, just send them, like send them a link to the page that you want them to go see videos versus sending them to one page that has all your videos that they're like, well, I'm a business. This one's a sports video. That one's like an event video. Like it does, it's not relevant to them. Okay. So make it, yeah, so just kind of categorizing that that way, like, hey, we're reaching out to a business. This fits your need. This correct. This fits well, your brand. Like, okay. Yeah, check out these videos that we've done in the past. I think we could you know, do some great stuff together. So that would be like the first thing that I would go from there. Um, and then, you know, businesses that you have worked with, be like, you know, I would reach out to them in a simple email, be like, hey, we're trying to grow or reviews, would you mind if I send you a link to get a review from you? And I used to do, I used to like send the link in the past and I have it there, but I think I have better returns when I just ask someone first, if I could send them a link before I do. And then for the most time, you no, know, we get plenty, we got a lot of reviews from clients like that, but it's just like doing those little increments of things for your business, business are just gonna help you keep building and building if you're gonna be here for the long run. Got it. And then another thing for you, it's just like, I, I don't know how busy you are working with that school, but another great thing is bringing on someone or at least a freelancer that can help run that account for the most part. So you could then run your business and work on those bigger projects. So like my sister, she handles one of our biggest accounts, which we do photos and video for a car dealership in Pompano. And I pretty much, I ran that account for the first year and a half. And then it was pretty much, then it was like 50, 50. I was there, you know, uh, half the week. She was there, did it half the week. And now for the past year, she just handles that account by herself. And the client's happy with her because, you know, we're now I'm able to deliver the, the videos and photos to him faster because now she shoots it, uploads it. As soon as I get it, I edit it. In the past, I would have to go shoot it, you know, upload it and edit it. It took me a lot longer. So I made the process faster for him. So he was cool with that. But then me not having to go take car photos allowed me time to work on getting new clients. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I usually hand off work once like things get busy. Mm -hmm. um, because again, at the end of the day, it's all about you know the business making a profit. But right now, like I said, like if I could, you know, for whatever reason, oh hey, you just popped up. Now. Dude, I didn't know the whole time it wasn't working. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, my bad for not telling you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, like I said, like the the university stuff pays well. Um, for whatever reason, uh, so I've been really trying to watch uh, my finances for the for the past two three years uh, running the business, and I've always seen that like January is like dead. It starts picking up until about May, then summer is completely dead, and then things start picking up. You know, August on so. Uh, with this month of January, I've just been taking it slow. That's why I'm like, you know what? Let me try to order a website. Let me try to do this. And then once things start picking up, that's when I have a couple people, friends of mine that uh, that work in the field that I can hand off. Hey, can you shoot this event? Hey, take photos at this thing. Hey, can you handle this edit? And even at that, my fiance uh, will edit. You know, she she's uh, she does photo too, so she could handle any photo edit. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to video work, like she's pretty knowledgeable. Like if she has the time, like. She can help out on like you know doing selections on videos that way like i can get the the premiere project and like it's already selected and i just gotta piece it together and you know you know finish it up type stuff so yeah I so have a little like workforce around me already um it's just i guess trying to pick up more more jobs so that way i could start you know really assigning these projects uh, more often yeah i just signed up for video husky this past month, which they do, it's like 500 bucks a month for unlimited video, but they only can work on one project at a time. But like a lot of the new vlog content and things like that, I started using them for the same reason of like, they're pretty much doing all the grunt work for me of like, hey, just choose the selects, put the best shots, and then they send me the project files, and then I take it from there. Having someone help do the, the grunt work definitely helps a lot. Yeah, I could imagine. That's the thing, especially like when you're doing docs, like, or like these testimonials, sometimes like it takes so long to get like the good pieces or the actual good quote, as opposed to listening to the whole, you know, 45 minute video. Mm -hmm. um, I actually saw, uh, I could send it your way. I think I forgot what it was called, but there's this program that you basically you shoot your, your raw video and you upload the video onto the site and then it creates a transcription of the entire like uh interview with the person so that way it's kind of like on lindo where you could like highlight on a certain sentence and it takes it to that point in the video oh really yeah let me see if i can find it and then um if the, the call ends uh before i find it, i'll just text it to you okay that, that works for me yeah man so is there anything else i can cover for you or what I feel like I gave you a lot of uh, stuff to go through. And then I'll send you uh, a copy of... Are you recording this as well or no? I, I recorded it halfway into it because I was like, damn, like this might be worth like going back to just to like kind of brush up on like kind of like one of the future calls. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm probably going to actually... Chris, I'm going to hook you up, bro. I'm going to... I'm going to put... I'm going to see if Chris wants to add this to the library. Uh, I think it would be helpful for a lot of the people on there, on the pro group. Yeah, I I could definitely attest to that. Uh, you gave me a lot of pointers and stuff that I guess, uh, stuff that I've like either thought about and then things that I, I haven't even thought about at all. So uh, I got a lot of homework out of this and I really appreciate that, bro. No, man, for sure. I'm, uh, any, if you got any of the questions, man, just let me know. Uh, like this is a shit I'm really passionate about doing. So I'd love to find yeah. out how everything goes from here. I gotta tell you, bro, like uh, some of the content that you're posting on there, like social or YouTube, like this kind of BTS backend stuff, like uh, I, I I understand now, like why this kind of content is so much more, you know, easily digestible and shareable because, you know, you have your Casey Neistat and all these other bloggers that are just like, oh, check me out, check me out. But not everyone is like, you know, willing to just, you know, watch whatever TV show, but everybody, for the most part, if you're self-employed, like, you want to grow your business. And I think I understand why the future has been able to grow, why stuff like this, like creating that kind of, uh, you're that worth for other people that like, all right, I know that is going to post something cool that I can get out of it. Like, let me see what he has to say. So you're, you're definitely killing it in that regard. Well, I mean, and to be honest with you, so like Casey Neistat is creative as fuck. Like I can't like, and I know for a lot of people, I know there's, there's so many more creatives out there that are better than me at being creative, better than me in shotgun position, better than me in doing these different things. But I know one thing that I'm really good about is helping other people with their business when it comes to video production and talking about it. Because like, what I love about the future, like they talk about how to run a business. 
Everyone else is showing you how to do tutorials on graphic design or Photoshop or Illustrator. They're showing you how to edit the stuff and they talk about different theories. But like the future actually tells you how to run your business, how to talk to clients. And I found that there's not a lot of people that do that when it comes to video production. Probably there's like five accounts on YouTube that I found that, that do that. And then a lot of um, somebody else recommend you check out is Alex Becker on YouTube. Um, I, I listened to a lot of his stuff for mindset and then, uh, what's his, what's the name of the guy from consulting.com is Sam Ovens. So Sam Ovens, I used to hate him for his like consulting.com website cause he used to spam the shit out of me. But then he has these like white talking board videos that like, it's all mindset stuff that like, to me, feel like college lectures. And those are things that really helped me because like they've actually built very successful businesses, but they do like, you know, very simple style content of just like talking about mindset and talking about business stuff that most people are not doing. So I'm trying to do the exact same style of content, but for video production. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's the thing, like I'm lucky enough that a lot of, uh, the, the people around me, I've, I've tried to really just create some sort of like community of create of creatives around me in Miami, whether, you know, friends that I worked with or had for class at the university to some friends that I met at church, like, you know, because really what it is, is kind of like my sort of like, hey, I got this big project, like, da, 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 like, what do you guys think? But then it's a different sometimes like it's helpful but then other times like they just don't get it because if it's someone that's working like a full time you'll say oh do it at this rate it's like you know like you don't understand like the full gist of like the hunger of like yo i'm on my own like i'm not i don't really have a salary like behind me yeah so sometimes like i, I kind of felt like i outgrew that where it's like you know some of these people that are comfortable like you know nothing against them but like it's just it's not the same mentality as someone that's trying to go out and search for clients they're just they have their happy nine to five nothing against them they get a, a calls every so often they're cool with it but me i'm like all right how can i take this to the next level how can i grow this how can i do this you know mm -hmm. and that's uh, what i found with the future so being able to just grow in that uh business mindset uh, it, it's made a, a world of a difference in the couple of months that i've been you know involved that yeah, did it, it, it literally it, it literally changed my my it changed my business because our first year I did forty. I did like forty three thousand dollars. Like when I moved back from New York, I mean, I, I even think I think def, I, so. I guess my real first year, I did like twenty three thousand dollars. Then our second year, we did like forty three thousand dollars, and then I came across the future, and then the following year we did a hundred k, and then this year we did one thirty five. And, but it was all from like, and I'm still working on the same projects. You know what I mean? Like nothing, like nothing has changed about, like I probably, I got better camera gear this past year, but other than that, like we're still shooting the same type of projects, but I was just able to talk to the clients better and have an understanding of their needs versus just be like, oh, you want a video? Great, I'll shoot you a video. And like not understanding what is the goal of your video? What is it that you're actually trying to do? But just being able to talk to the clients and the stuff I learned from Chris, it literally just changed my business. Yeah, no, I, I could see it. I could see it a thousand percent. Just really understanding pricing and really dealing with clients as opposed to like, you know, just falling on your face about it over and over again and like learning by, you know, by trial or trial and error. Yeah. So if you remind me asking, what are you charging for video projects? Um, right now, a, a solid number that I'm doing for videos, uh, I started about 1500 Okay. Um, so, uh, like when I met you, um, the thing is that uh, back then when we talked, like I showed you a couple of video things that I did, I, and I've just seen that like working quote unquote for friends is always such a pain in the ass because uh, just certain people will, like they put on that facade as a friend, but then they're looking to see like how much they can break you down when it comes to bit, like you know projects. And I was doing like these thirty second videos for three hundred dollars a pop, and like. It, it was cool money for like a week, you know, a week's pay, but it wasn't anything worthwhile, you know? And like, um, just now, like I'm doing like 1500, uh, I just had a kind of a proposal that I sent out to this developer down here in Miami uh, to create video. Um, and for that, I was telling them $800 for 30 second videos. And then as a quick incentive to see if it would work is like, you know, the more that they would uh, choose to do video with me per month on that monthly retainer, the more of a discount I would be willing to give them. 
So one video for 30 seconds, I would sell for 800. But if they were to, you know, want to do four videos, four 30 second videos a month, I'm able to do $800 per video, but then I'll give them a 15% discount. So that way it's more incentive for them to talk to like their financial department and be like, hey, you know, the more videos we do with him, uh, we're saving more money and we also need the content anyway. So da, 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 da. Um, so that's where I'm at now currently. Um, and I'm just, I'm trying to make sure that like anytime I take a project, like, you know, whether it's editing, editing for at least $500 per, and then when it comes to shooting video, like I think of it like, you know, it'll cost about $200 an hour to shoot, you know, two, three hours. And then when it comes to editing, I do like, uh, I, th I forgot if it's a time and a half or half the time. So if it's like a four hour event, I'll be like, all right, this is going to take me about two hours to edit fully, you know, and then I kind of put that into the rate, you know, and I kind of go from there. And then uh, just depending on the client, because if it's something like um, a sneaker store com compared to like a hotel or a developer, like those are two completely separate rates. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's a great price point. So, like, do you do half day rates or full day rates as well, or what? Um, usually, I, it's just trying to understand what the client needs um, and making sure that uh, it kind of respects my time. Because, uh, like, another project that just came through the door was like some sort of life coach lady where she wanted mm -hmm. to create content for social, and that's fine. Uh, they wanted to do uh, like a, a full day rate, and I was like for what you need, you don't need me to be there for a full eight hours. Like you, you want to do three videos a month. That's fine. Like we can knock it out in less time. As long as you guys have the script ready of what you want to say, being that you're the life coach, like, mm -hmm. you know, I could come in, we get you talking on camera, we get you talking around the city, just, you know, hanging out, getting some full cool B-roll kind of like Gary B. Like, I know I can knock this out in three hours, like shooting wise. I don't need to be there for eight hours and just letting them know like, Hey, this will be the rate for the full day. I don't think we need that. I think for the times that, that we would need for whether the three three hours for this project, we could do it at this rate. And then they understand like, okay, um, it's less time, it's less money. Okay, this seems like a better idea. So uh, I it's just one thing, I guess with this year uh, is that um, I'm, I'm more respectful of my time. Um, and I wanna make sure like, I'm not like, in a way bored when I'm on a shoot. I don't know how many times I've gone to conferences and it's like, I'll be booked for eight hours and it's a great pay, but like I'm working like for honestly 30 minutes and I'm just kind of like eating shit, you know, the rest of the time that I'm there. And I want to just make sure that like, I'm really utilizing my time so that I don't have to be doing shit like that. I mean, so I'm kind of biased towards, towards that. It's like in those situations for those type of projects, that's when I bring somebody else on to handle those really boring type things. Now for your client that wanted to pay you a full day rate and you discourage her from that, I'd be careful with that just because you're conditioning her to pay less. In those situations with clients, what I do is that, do you charge your client for a breakup, for a setup and breakdown? Uh, no. So include that, so like my half day, my half day shoot really, they only really get two hours of that. One hour for setup and then one hour for breakdown. Cause I still got, if I have somebody with me, I still gotta pay. And then depends if it's really easy stuff, then I'll, then I'll tell them it's 30 minutes. You know, so I'll be like, hey, it all depends on the shoot, right? So if it's a super easy shoot, then it'll be 30 minutes setup, 30 minutes breakdown. So that's an hour out of their half day, which is four hours. So the other thing I do, if we, she books me for a full day and we only shoot for six hours, I'll credit her those remaining two hours, which would be 400 bucks. I'll credit that into her editing. Cause I yeah. still want the, cause I still want the money and I, I want her to get used to paying me. But if you're getting her to pay less, she's gonna like, she's gonna wanna try to squeeze you every single time now. Cause now she's having, a real, like a realization of how much it really costs to do that. So like, I'll just be careful with that. And like what I found, like I said, for me is, hey, I'm just gonna credit you $400 towards the editing and then we can take it from there. Or like, hey, now that we actually have this, how like try shooting other stuff that you normally wouldn't. It's like in the sense of the conference, you're just doing an event thing and be like, hey, how'd you feel if we got, if we shot testimonials for you 
Oh, testimonials would be great. Awesome. So we're going to shoot the testimonials because I'm ready here. But then when it comes to editing, I'm going to charge you separate for editing to do these testimonials for you. Boom. I just added more stuff on there. So I always try to find when I have extra time on shoots, what is it can I do that's different that we haven't tried before? What can, cause you're like, you're, you're being, you're pretty much, you're getting paid to learn and maybe try something new that you normally wouldn't have. And it's really, to me, it was like a really big mindset change. Cause like, I, I felt like that about certain things that I was doing. Cause like I go to LA a lot and I'll volunteer, like I'll intern and volunteer for bigger production companies. And I've been in a situation that like, I, I went to go work for this really big production company, shout out to Ridge Productions. And they're like, hey, go get us coffee, like go to a freaking Home Depot and do these things. And at first I was like, man, I can't believe it came out so late to fucking go to Home Depot and get these guys coffee. But I was always ready on set. And by the end of that day, I was shooting on like a hundred thousand dollar red setup, like forty thousand dollar lens. But like I was re like, I had the mentality at first of like, oh man, like I'm wasting my time. But then I'm like, what is it? Can I learn from the shoot? I never worked with an R or red before. Let me see how they set up the red. Let me see what they're doing these things. What is it that I could do that's going to be different that I haven't done before? Because if I'm going to be here, how can I maximize this time? So like when I did events, I offered to do testimonials for clients because now they can use those testimonials to get more clients, but then also I'm bringing them more value, but I'm also charging them more money to edit more video. Because like if you could milk that client to get more work from them and it's something that easy, that's when you bring on somebody else to edit those testimonials for you or edit the other stuff. And now that you actually have more money from that client, you could pay somebody else to do that work for you while you work on the next project. Because, you know, you all you want to do is build runway. Chris talks about this. You want to build runway for your business. So like if you're just starting now, you want to get all those kind of projects that you hate if they're going to pay you the money that you deserve. But then, and I'm sorry if I'm like renting and going through different parts, but uh, oh, it's, uh, what is, it's, uh, it's the phone call test. I don't know if you heard about this before. Is if your client calls you right now, are you going to be happy or upset to pick up that phone call? Because if you're upset, you didn't charge them enough money. And if yeah. you're happy, it's so like, I have a client that we do work for them. Super boring. But if he calls me, Matt, what do you need, bro? How are you doing today? What can I do for you? You know what I mean? Because he pays me more than what we normally charge. But, you know, I'm willing to, to deal with that because he's paying me more. So it's like, you know, when you're, when you're about to price a client, ask yourself two weeks from now, if this client called me, would I be upset or happy to pick up that phone call? And if you're upset, you probably didn't charge enough. But build that runway in the beginning that allows you to start doing less of work that you don't want to do. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Make sure that you're charging enough so that you're excited to take on the project as opposed to undercharging. And then every time that person hits you up, you're just ready. Yeah, you're like, oh, fuck, this guy again. Like, yeah, exactly. So in the beginning, dude, like, I, like, my first year, man, like, here, like, Dude, I was literally calling businesses, offering free videos, and people were telling me no. You know what I mean? Like, my, I remember my sister cried because I hired my sister. She was working as a hostess, and then, like, she was making, like, 11 bucks an hour. I was like, listen, I could pay you $12 an hour, and you can work for me. You can work from home. You can do whatever you want. And we did, like, the whole local search thing. We found, like, 100 businesses to contact. She literally emailed a hundred people and one of them had replied and she started crying. She's like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm like, yo, that's great. One person out of a hundred, like, you know how good that is? Like, but it's just like, you know, and all it took is that one person, you know what I mean? Cause like if you charge enough, that one phone call is worth everything else. But it's like, you know, in that beginning, you have to just build that clientele list, build that bank account so later on you don't have to deal with those type of clients anymore but it's just one of those things like the barrier to entry for what we do is so low now that anyone could do what we do so you have to compete in the market in the beginning that you know it's very saturated but um you know the cream rises to the top when if you stick in there and you keep doing your shit and you keep putting good work and your clients are happy with the things you're doing 
they're gonna give you more business because there's a lot of shitty vendors out there dude like people business owners end up working with a lot of bad vendors because there's a lot of people out there that don't care but you, you, if you could show them that you care about what you do and you want to bring them value they'll keep you around and they'll talk about you yeah yeah a thousand percent i actually just picked up uh this one uh sneaker store just because the the photographer that they were using was just giving them was it, it was making it more difficult than actually like filling their needs so that then uh through a mutual friend we got in contact and now uh i'll be picking up some some uh, equipment from them to start shooting and creating content for them oh so a little like that i always know uh and i always say like Miami's like a, a big city, but I guess how it's built, like everyone knows each other and instead of six degrees of separation, it actually feels like it's two. And like just being honest and, you know, giving a fuck. And, you know, the on, the main thing is being honest with people just because I guess uh, there's so many people trying to cut corners and, you know, just eating shit. But it, you know, it's almost like your word and your reputation really precedes you and stuff like this, just because like everyone in the industry and whatever town you're in, chances are they all know each other, you know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, dude, if I was you, and, and I'm just going to tell you the stuff that I've done, is you going to that store to go pick up stuff from them, vlog about it, like make a video about making the video or shooting the content for that brand. Yeah, I've been, that's one thing that I've been meaning to do more because I, I would always do like, you know, some sort of Instagram story, like, oh, you know, working on set or doing this, but... Um, it's funny because I would put so much more emphasis on, on Instagram, but I've seen that like, YouTube grow so much faster. And uh, that's one thing I've been meaning to do, you know, kind of just something as dumb as like mounting a GoPro on the camera and showing how I'm doing it, kind of giving that kind of lifestyle. And yeah. with all the kind of vlogging that's out there, uh, I've been thinking about this one kind of uh, vlog style that would be a mix between like a Casey, a Casey Neistat mixed with, you know, some sort of just entrepreneur business type of where it's like hey i'm vince revis i run my own uh you know design company we we offer photo video and design you know i'm gonna take you guys on a tour with me while we do you know while we're on this project or while we're on this project while we're about to go shoot this event that way it's like i have the deliverable of the event and then there's also that behind the scenes of like all right this is how we're getting it done type deal. correct and that's the same way so like we start so my content on YouTube, a lot of my business vlogs that I've we shot is for that exact reason. So we have one that's like shooting a company culture video. And, you know, we documented the whole thing because we interviewed like eight people that day. We went to like two events to go shoot all this stuff for them. But now when somebody else comes to me for a company culture video, I'll be like, hey, check, here's our final product that we did, but also, here is or behind the scenes of what that production looks like. This is why we're charging you seven thousand dollars because if you want something like that, this is what goes into it. Because sometimes people think like, "Oh, you're gonna come in and shoot a video, and it's gonna be you with the fucking camera and a mic, and that's it." But they're like, "Oh, you got lights, you, like you got makeup, you got all these different things." Yeah, I feel it's production at that point instead of just you know I'm I'm gonna come do video. Exactly. So when you're able to show them your process and like I always go back to Gary V. It's like you know document, don't create. It's I struggle with that. Like, you know, I'm not a native English speaker. English is my second language and I've always struggled with that. So like, especially if I get in front of camera, sometimes I talk way too fast and I mumble and I go through all these different things. But if I'm just documenting what I'm what's happening, it's a lot easier for me because I'm not here trying to think of like, how can I, I articulate this properly? But if I'm just showing you what I do, I know how to do what I do. There's no questions about that. But if I like I bought I just bought the GoPro Max 360 for that reason that like it's good for vlogging supposedly I'm gonna do a test this weekend but if I can get that camera and put it on a freaking light stand and it shoots 360 around me I don't need to get somebody to vlog for me as much you know as I did before because I just put this around me and it's literally capturing everything that's happening in the room so if I need to cut one way or the other I'm able to use that footage. So like mm -hmm. that's just something that like I wanted to make that process because if I'm creating content and it's a different mind shift for me too was like, you know, I was creating content in the past for my followers on Instagram. But as we all realize, followers to a certain extent, unless you're, you know, passing that 10K with followers, 
they're not paying your bills. Yeah, Business owners know. are. I so like for me, like I want to. The thing I care more. The the thing I care the most about is getting results from my clients, and then all the other stuff will come. But like I was focusing on getting likes, focusing on all these different things. They're not paying my bills, but my client being happy and getting the video very quickly and understanding the process of what we do, that made a difference in my business. Mm -hmm. I guess one one last thing I wanted to ask, what do you think about making that impression? You kind of touched upon it about, you know, bringing uh, makeup and lights. Like sometimes I feel like there's a simple way to go about it, you know, with some shoots, but the more toys that you take out just to, you know, really impress the client and be like, holy shit, wow, I'm really, this was worth the budget. This guy's got, you know, these, all these uh, light stands and cameras and lights and like, you know, wow, like not even a laugh. Like now there's a boom mic, you know, just to impress like, you know, a bigger client. Do you think it's worth it or it's just, you know, clout like a show? Depends on the project. And it really comes down to, um, I want to give the client what they deserve. I'm never going to give a client less than what they paid for, right? But it all comes down for you is you spending. So it's like if you can get the same result with, you know, one camera and a lav mic and it's going to reach the goal, did you really need to set up? Like, did you need to bring a red and have like, you know, a, a gaffer and these different things? Probably not. But that's to me where it comes down is like, What's going to be so like we did a product shoot recently for a hat company. So for me, for that shoot made sense for me to bring someone that did hair and makeup for the shoot because that's going to have a, like what's going to benefit the end product. So like, you know, different shoots, I might not bring hair and makeup, but I'll rent a good looking office or Airbnb to do the shoot because that's going to bring production value. So it's just like, it's what, how can you use the funds that you're getting to allocate to get a better production? Cause you don't need to bring the red and the hair makeup and rent all those different things. If they're paying you $20,000, sure. You know what I mean? Cause you want to make sure that they're getting their money's worth. But for me being a small business that our projects range between, you know, the seven to three thousand dollars, I will allocate the funds to what I think will benefit the end product. Of course. But you know, you going to shoot something for the shoe store, I'll probably bring like an after 120D, my Sony A7, and like a couple lenses, and then a Ronin S. Like I don't need much more than that to do something like that. Especially well, that's, that's running good. That's that's nowhere near. Yeah. But uh, I've just always thought about that. If I were to get a hold of like, you know, a developer and we're doing some sort of testimonial to just making sure like you know bringing, bringing all the toys out to make sure like hey i'm gonna make sure that this is the highest level of production that i can provide you yeah so like in that sense so like for my uh company culture video that i did we um i brought a makeup artist because we're shooting like seven interviews so when the client like wow you brought a makeup artist like what because like Clients looking at gear, like if you just bring a freaking camera case, they're already impressed by most of that because they usually think it's gonna be a dude with the backpack, right? So like you bring a light stand and you got a camera case and you bring a makeup artist, what's gonna give them that wall effect, that wall effect of like, wow, my money's being well spent. You know what I mean? Cause like you can lay out a bunch of gear, but they don't really know what the gear means. Like, well, he has a lot of gear, but that's great. But like, oh my God, we got, we got a makeup, we got a makeup artist on the office today. Like, oh wow. Like people are going to talk about that shit. Like, oh, Johnny got his makeup done. You know what I mean? Like that's the stuff that will make an impression on them with gear. Dude, my first, like when we did our $80,000 or a hundred thousand dollars that, that year, I was shooting on a Nikon D7100. Like the guy Gabe better shoot with now, when I first met him, like he was in shock. He's like, dude, you're getting clients shooting with the Nikon crop sensor camera that's like seven years old. I'm like, yup. Guess what? My clients don't know and didn't care. I had a good, I had good glass on it. I had like a Sigma 17 of 49 2.8. And I had two of those cameras with the same lenses. So like the end, like, at that time, I invested in good, I had really good audio, I had really good lighting, but my cameras weren't great. 
but I learned how to use my lighting and audio so like the video came out really great because those are things that like make a really big difference in video, right? But the clients yeah. didn't care. Like we're not watching this in a big screen. It's gone on social media. Like like they don't know the difference between if it's shot in a red or if I was shot on like my Nikon camera. It didn't matter. Yeah, no, and especially for social, um, uh, I've seen people shooting on red just if that, that that kind of like oh, but I got a red, and it's like it's great, but it's still gonna be played at four eighty p on social. But you know, if it works, it works. By all means, I don't want to sound like a hater. No, but it's the same, like, and I feel you, bro, because, like, even with the Sony, going from the, the codex from my Nikon to the Sony is ridiculous. Like, no, the, it's not in there. Yeah, like, it, and, it, and what's the problem about that is that, like, when you get in a better camera, guess what? You also need better hardware. Your computer needs to be better. You need, you know, more memory. You need more storage. And those are all the different things that bring your cost of operation higher because now you're buying more hard drives. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's all these different things that you have to do. So for me to go out and shoot a social media video on a red, so I could do post-production on a heavy computer for that doesn't make sense for my business. I want to get these videos done as fast as possible so I can work on the next project. At the end of the day, it's just creating that kind of assembly line that, that you could be as efficient as possible. Exactly. Definitely, man. <laughs> oh, man. Well, appreciate it, bro. I, I got a lot of homework right now. Don't, man. I'm glad. If you I really, got, I really, really do. If you need any follow-up stuff, man, you got my number. We could do a follow-up call later. And then um, if you got questions about the SEO stuff, just let me know what you want to know. We could even probably do another video about that, too. But, you know, okay. just take action from some of the stuff we did today. And then anything you need follow up on, let me know. If anything, we'll come out. I'll come out to Miami. We'll shoot a little video together. And we can kind of go over all this shit, too. So. All right. By all means, man, I, I'm super down. I'm in. And if there's anything you need help with, anything at all, you just, you know, shoot me a text, whatever you need. All right, bro. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for your time. All right. Later, bro. Oh, and make sure that you send me a copy of this. Oh, for sure. We'll do. Just saw it. it's gonna like it's uh what an hour and twenty minute video. So it's definitely gonna get my uh YouTube uh, watch time up. Oh, there you go. Awesome Glad man. Give service. All right, bro. Peace. Right. Later, man. All right, guys. If you watch this video and you found this helpful, make sure to hit subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know. Um, I'd love to do a free giveaway with you guys. Let me know in the comments what you want to learn, and I'm gonna pick one winner this week to do a live call just like this and answer any questions that you have. Hope you guys have a great day. Peace.